Has anyone ever felt like they've lost their faith? If you grew up like I did, that was a spiritual bad thing. Losing faith, losing hope was the thing that wasn't supposed to happen. I'm coming from a Christian tradition, that Christians should be happy all the time. You ever heard the happy Christians, right? And that's part of that too blessed to be stressed. Like if you're really blessed, if you're really faithful, if you really are counting your blessings, then you really ought to be happy all the time. But when you don't feel happy all the time, then you always have this conclusion that maybe you're not being a very good faithful person. Loss is part of life. And as we live, we have new experiences and that changes who we are and how we see the world and what we believe. Our speaker is a scholar and activist, a brilliant educator, thinker, writer, committed to connecting faith and social justice. We're joined today by Monica A. Coleman, who is Professor of Constructive Theology and African American Religions. She's also an ordained elder in the African Methodist Episcopal Church, the AME, and the author of several books. I'm a philosophical theologian, which means that I use philosophical ideas and ideas about our worldview to talk about how we think about God. I began writing about living with a depressive condition because everyone who wrote about mental health challenges, they all like never talked about God. And I have one unspiritual comment about it. Suffering sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Because I come from a tradition that says things like you're too blessed to be stressed. Anyone ever heard that? Which now leads to my next unspiritual comment. That this statement that that which does not kill us makes us stronger. Menor. <laughs> <laughs> Intense suffering changes your faith. At least for me, it changed my faith. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I wasn't ready to question things I'd been taught. So in many ways we evolve in our faith all the time and we just don't notice. If we are willing to do the work, tell the stories, shine the lights, sweep the houses, reach into places where we don't always see a clear path out, there will be joy on the other side. So we've protested and marched and gave money and volunteered and talked with friends and sat on committees and made calls and voted and tried to sway what was left of the consciousness of a democratic dream. And in many parts of the country, we did the thing. But to cast out is just to disarm the power, to take away the part that constrains you, that isolates you, that makes you live among the tombs. That's all it means to cast out. And a big way we cast out that this passage suggests is just by telling our story. Really, they tell me how they respond to it, like yeah. how this how something I've written brings up something they've been thinking yeah. about, or something they've been wrestling about, and they didn't have a voice for it, they didn't know other people experienced it. To see that large churches are having conversations about mental health and faith, that brings so much hope. But this lesson suggests that if you lose your faith, all you have to do is show up. Where are you showing up? Is it a garden? Is it a park? Is it the gym? As we change and as we grow, we shed the skin of who we used to be. And we are literally brand new creations each day, in each moment. Is it possible your faith might find you where you already are?